Gina Carano joins Ben Shapiro on the Sunday special, and the President of the United States wants to increase minimum wage to $15. And I got a lot to say about that. So this episode was an emotional episode and probably one of the best Sunday specials Ben Shapiro has done, where Gina takes us through the emotional roller coaster and the pain that Disney and Lucasfilm have put her through. Half this pain is coming from Lucasfilm and Disney, and the other half is coming from the leftist mob. The episode opens up with Gina taking us through on how she got casted on The Mandalorian, and then kind of what were the first glimpses where she noticed that Disney was looking into her and kind of watching her like a hawk. And, uh, and how quickly was it apparent to you that politics was going to be a problem, uh, either in the production of the show or on the set or, or in any way? When we, start, we, when we first started having, you know, problems was, um, it had to have been on the pronoun usage, I think, was the first problem. Can you take us through sort of the controversy over the uh, transgender pronoun? Because that was the first time you started really trending on Twitter for politics. I ended up putting beep bop boop in my um, Twitter, bi or Twitter bio. And at 100%, um, it was 100% to go to the Twitter mob that was telling you what to do. Um, and it had zero to do with trying to go after the, the transgender community, because I would never do that. Um, I'm not, I'm just me personally, I'm not trying to target anybody or go out after anybody. And so as soon as I saw, I saw people started taking that wrong, you know, I put right after that, I was like, no, beep bop boop was like me just saying, I, I literally said to my friend, I was like, you know, what if, uh, let's put something in my bio just to show, like, I can put whatever I want in my bio, just like they put, like, whatever they want in their bio, like Trash Panda and all this stuff. And, like, you know, um, so I just put these noises in my bio, and uh, then there was this crazy meltdown. It was just a big, massive meltdown, and, uh, you know, all the fear and all of the stuff goes straight through your skin, and you start like, whoa, what is that? What I love about this portion of the interview is that Gina is showing that she is pro-free speech. It's her words. Nobody can censor her. Nobody could take those words away. And that she's going to post whatever she wants on her social media account because it's her social media account. It's her words. And that you see constantly, especially throughout 2020 and 2021, is that these big tech companies are trying to censor conservatives and anybody out there that they disagree with. What Gina has shown throughout this interview is that she's not out there to hurt anybody. She's not being malicious. She's not being evil. She's not targeting anyone. She's just merely voicing her opinion and at times hoping that people can unify around those opinions that she's giving. It was kind of funny to watch because you could see her trying to process the leftist mob mentality as well as Disney and Lucasfilm on the postings that she made on Twitter. What happened was Disney sent over a media personnel to her house on to kind of coach her through things, kind of give her a little bit, bit of PR work. And through that, the media person explained to her that the left is going to react with emotional responses from another emotional response. And that's how Gina needs to get through to them. But Gina's trying to comprehend that if somebody gives me an emotional response, what I'm going to do is give them a logical and reasoning response. And that's something that they need to accept. And we as conservatives have been dealing with that for years where the left has given us an emotional response and what they want from us in return is another emotional response. But what we give them instead is a logical and reasoning answer, a factual based answer, maybe on statistics or something else. And they're not able to comprehend that because what they're expecting is another emotional response to their emotional response. And see Gina trying to go through that as somebody that's new to this political sphere is uh, quite entertaining, I must say. And I hope I hope that she sees it one day on that. It's tough to interact with the left because they want that emotional response. They don't engage in uh, the logical and reasoning responses that we give. Now, us as conservatives and also Gina need to somehow formulate our responses where that we can still put in there our emotional response, but also have it be logical and reasoning based. That way we can have a dialogue with the left and hopefully come to a culture and an environment where we can both get along and both be understanding as one uh, family uh, under God and as well as Americans. The interview kind of segues into Gina talking about Disney and Lucasfilm employees slanding her on their websites. And I think this is starting to give us kind of an insight on what this company is all about and kind of how they're treating their employees on a personal level behind the scenes, let alone what is going on public, which I'll get to in a little bit. Uh, because I, I mean, we got down to this like <laughs> statement within like two words, like almost like two words, this ridiculous thing. And they were like, and they just said it was not apologetic enough. And I was like, I, 
I mean, it was shocking. Like, I want to communicate. Um, they wanted me to get, and all these Lucasfilm employees are railing me on their um, websites. I mean, one of them, a uh, creative director, had a GoFundMe, and in the <laughs> GoFundMe bio, it was like, uh, this is because our ignorant actress, and, you know, and like, it, it was like, you're, you can really hear the hurt and the pain that Disney, Lucasfilm, the employees, uh, the leftist mob have really put on her. And it's it's an emotional thing to watch. And you can't help but get teary-eyed yourself as somebody that's probably conservative or somebody that's dealing with it, that this should have never happened. They should have never handled it the way that they handled it. They should have never treated her the way that they're treating her. And that we need to stand behind her just like Ben Shapiro is doing and support this strong woman through her career and really lift her up just as we've been doing. Parts of this episode were so hard to watch because at various points, I really did think that she was going to break down crying. I was starting to get teary eyed because I could tell that she's had a lot of pain and a lot of turmoil from this whole situation. And you can't help but feel for her. Hearing her keep it together throughout this interview was inspirational, I'm sure to many. And kind of, again, shows what cancel culture can do to people. It can destroy them. It can destroy their lives. They can cause them to go into depression. And if we truly care about one another, not just people on the right, but also people on the left, is that we should never treat people this way. We should always treat people with kindness and forgiveness and love and care. And I think that's something that we're lacking in today's culture is that love and that forgiveness. And somehow through dialogue between the right and the left, we need to find that common ground on forgiveness and love and help people and lift people up rather than bringing them down. Later on in the interview, we really see what type of company Disney has created for themselves as well as Lucasfilm on the way that they fired Gina Carano. Now, there was glimpses and rumors out there that she found out the same way that we did. Well, in fact, looking at this interview now, it is true. She found out that she was fired the same way that we all found out that she was fired, which was through social media. As somebody that has worked in the business world as an accountant, I got to say this is completely wrong and it's painful to see such a company like Disney do this to a person on a public level and not even give them the decency to meet with them one on one, explain their firing, explain why they did it, whether you agree with it or not. You know, Disney has the right to do it, but still to do it this way is it's it's painful and it's it's just wrong. It also makes you wonder if Disney is handling things like this on a public level, firing people the way they did like Gina on a public level, it really makes you wonder what's going on behind the scenes on an internal level on how they're treating their employees. The interview continues with Gina explaining all her different tweets and her posts that she has made. She gives the logic and the reasoning behind each one. And something that she found out is that that's not good enough for the left. The left doesn't care what you your explanation is. They don't care what your thoughts are. They only care about what they think your thoughts are, not what you think that your thoughts are. And that's the problem with the left is that they'll interpret what you say, even though you explain to them exactly what you meant by it, exactly why you said it. It doesn't matter because they're still going to twist it and manipulate it and formulate it in their own head on what you truly meant by it, even though you're telling them that's not what you meant. And that's the problem that we're having. How do you have dialogue with somebody that you're explaining to them what your thinking is and they're explaining to you what they think that your thinking is? And that's the problem that we're having there. And there's a big disconnect. And somehow we have to get around that. Somehow we have to be able to create dialogue with these people. Because again, we're all Americans and we need to come to some sort of consensus with them so that we can move forward as a country, so that we don't have this cancel culture, so that we don't have this problem. And that we can all live in the same milieu, the same country together and have, again, I, I'm kind of a big person about love and unity, but I truly do want that. And it's kind of hard to see that this love and unity is not happening, even though we have a president of the United States that's trying to push for it. I'm glad that he's pushing for it, but uh, there's a lot of things that need to change on both sides and somehow we got to get there. Lastly, the big thing that resonated with me was, was uh, Gina's message of hope for conservatives, for people out there that have been canceled, is that there's other tables that are being created that you're invited to. And that's something that we need to do as conservatives is create a co competition, enter the entertainment industry like Ben Shapiro is doing, and offer up a table where not just conservatives can sit at, but everybody else can sit at. With that message of hope, I hope that us conservatives can support one another just as Gina and Ben Shapiro are supporting one another in that way. So I hope that you can like and subscribe to my channel so that we can get this message across as conservatives and that I can invite other conservatives onto my channel, invite them on my table or to my table so that they can get their message across and so that none of us get canceled and that free speech moves forward in this country. And now we transition into our president talking about taking the federal minimum wage from $7.25 to $15. I'm going to give you my perspective as an accountant and also as a conservative. 
So the first thing we want to look at is asking ourselves if the government should intervene in the free market where they're able to dictate what an employee's wage is and what the employer is going to pay that employee. Now, the general answer, not just on a conservative level, but also on an accounting level or economics level, the answer should be no, just in general. The reason why is because what does the government know, one, about you on an individual level, and two, what your skill is worth? You know what your skill is worth. The government does not. And it's between you and your employer on to dictate what that rate should be based on the skills that you can provide that employer. Well, what the government is doing now by increasing the minimum wage is they're making an even playing field for all parties that are within the free market. You might be asking, well, what's the problem with that? We're giving people more money, we're raising them up out of poverty, and we're increasing their wages to a living standard that's acceptable and maybe adjusted for inflation. And in some sense of an argument, if you're dealing with empathy, yeah, you do have an argument because we want people to be paid more money so they can live better lives and then they can support their children and their families and things of that nature. That's absolutely right. We want to help people, but the government forcing their hand has just handicapped a low skill worker versus a moderate to high skill worker. And I'll give you an example. Say there's two employees that an employer is looking at. There's an employee that has an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree versus an employee that has a general ed degree. Well, before, you could probably get that person with a general ed degree for a lot cheaper than you would that person with an associate's degree. But now by increasing, by increasing that wage, now you have a GED uh, person or an employee versus a college graduate, somebody with an associate's degree or bachelor's degree at the same wage. Well, that employer is going to go for that person that has more skill and more education versus that person that doesn't. So you just cause somebody to lose their job for absolutely no reason. Furthermore, you just lost people the opportunity to negotiate a higher wage because now the government has forced their hand in now providing and forcing an employer to play, pay an employee a wage that they might not even be worth in the first place. I can give you another example. Uh, say we're talking about ice hockey, the NHL, and I'm a hockey player and I'm getting drafted into the NHL. It's my first season. I'm a rookie. And then you have somebody that's an all-star, maybe Connor McDavid, and he's making $25 million. Well, what the government's doing is they're coming in and saying, hey, Connor McDavid, one of the best players in the NHL, yes, he's getting paid $25 million, but you know what? We have a rookie here. He too should be getting paid $25 million. So what is that What is that employer going to do? Well, they're going to keep Connor McGregor, right? They're paying him $25 million. He is worth that money on skill level basic al base alone. And then he's going to get rid of me as a rookie because my skill level is not there and there's no way that I'm worth $25 million. And so although it's a drastic example, this is what the government is doing by intervening into the free market and dictating what an employer should be paying an employee. If you want to see what happens when you increase wages within a state or within a city, you don't have to look any further than the state of California that's having a mass exodus. Because wages have increased and the government has intervening, forcing the employer to pay an employee at a certain wage rate, well, what happens is rent increases. And because rent increases, you'll have to build affordable housing because people can't pay for that rent. Because you're building affordable housing, the government has to pay for that affordable housing and they have to get the money from somewhere and they have to get it from the taxpayer. But because they weren't expecting to have to build affordable housing, now they have to increase the tax rate on the individual and the corporate level so that they could build that affordable housing. And now what that does is that's going to draw people from the state because people don't want to pay higher taxes because they're already being taxed at extraordinary rates as it is. So now people don't have more money in their pocket. The government's not getting any more money from their their citizens because their citizens are moving to another state and giving that other state their money. So now that hole is even deeper than it was before the government decided to put their hand into the free market and decide what somebody should be worth. One of the other things that is wrong by the government intervening is that, again, they are dictating what you are worth. Why should the government dictate not only what you're worth, but also telling an employer what you're worth as well? If you're not seeing an imbalance of power between the federal government and also the individual, there's nothing more telling than the government coming in and telling you what you're worth. Even coming from an accounting standpoint, again, somebody that's done someone's financial statements, their reviews, their compilations, things of that nature, the government has no idea on an individual basis, on an individual company's basis, what their financials look like, if that's something they can take on, if that's something that's going to help their business, is that something that's going to prosper their business, or is that something that's going to hurt their business? They don't care. They just look at the bottom line. Hey, we're giving people more money. They deserve more money, so let's give it to them. By increasing the minimum wage, you just hurt the employee and the employer. You hurt the employee by forcing them, forcing them to pay a wage that they don't agree upon and that they might not be able to take in financially. You also just hurt the employee because now you just force them to receive a wage that they know that they might not be worth and now are not going to be hired. They might be replaced. Or two, 
they might have their hours cut. cut. So they just went from maybe full-time to now half-time. Now they just went from having medical insurance to no medical insurance, all because people thought it was a great idea to increase minimum wages on companies that are already hurting as it is, small businesses that are hurting as it is, and they even thought it was a great idea to increase federal minimum wage during a time of COVID where companies are going under. You're forcing them not to open. You're forcing them now to pay a wage that's higher than they did and even sometimes double that wage, even if it's not this year or next year. You're causing them even more suffering and pain on trying to get out of this hole that you guys dug them because you decided it was a great idea to close them down. Another thing that happens with minimum wage is that big companies are able to eat the cost versus a small company that's not able to eat the cost. And a lot of times we look at Walmart, Target, whoever it may be, you look at these big companies and go, well, look at how much of their profit is. Look at their revenues. They can take the hit on this $15 minimum wage. And yes, you are true. They can take the hit on a minimum wage like $15, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the mom and pop shops. We're talking about the 88% of small businesses that make up this country. And we have to decide, can they take that hit? Should they take that hit right now or in the future? Future, can they afford a $15 minimum wage? They might be able to afford it and get by, but that's going to slow the growth. When they slow the growth or when the government causes them to slow growth, now what happens is that slows the growth of the economy because now people can't invest. They don't have extra money. They're putting that money in someone else. The other person now putting that money in the rent. Now that rent's going into affordable housing and you have this trickle down effect that happens. I know people don't want to believe that it does happen, but I'm telling you right now, in general, a trickle down effect does happen in some way, shape or form. And I'm still on the question, and I still have yet to get an answer from anybody on the left or a Democrat. Why is it $15? Why is it not $25? Why is it not $30? Why is it not $50? Why is it not $100 an hour? Why is it $15? Why did Who did the math on this to decide this is what everybody can handle? This is what all businesses are good for? This is, this is what somebody is worth? Isn't it a little wrong that you're deciding that somebody's worth $15 when in actuality maybe they're worth $24? Why do you get to decide that they're worth $15? I'm not deciding that they're worth $15. I think that they should be worth whatever they think that they're worth as long as an employer agrees that they're actually worth that. But what you're doing is you're stepping in to now decide that somebody might be worth, worth less than what they actually are or worth more than what they actually are. Both sides is wrong and we don't get to dictate what somebody is worth and what somebody isn't worth. And that's exactly what the government is doing. They're, they're forcing both parties' hands on this. It's completely wrong and that's not something they should do. They should step out of the free market and let the market absorb those costs in the way that is natural. If you like what you see on my channel, I hope that you can like and subscribe. Please share this with your friends and family and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.